coach of the Brooklyn Nets, Jock Vaughn, will be acting head coach tonight against Chicago. This was a mutual decision between Nash and the Nets. Adrian Wojnarowski tweeting moments ago that the Nets are going to be very active in talking to coaches that are available. Ime Udoka, one of the names that has come out there. Quinn Snyder is another name that's come out there. But a statement from Nash moments ago. Thank you, Brooklyn. A very heartfelt thanks to Joe and Clara Sai, along with Sean Marks, for giving me the opportunity to coach the Brooklyn Nets. I wish the Nets all the success in the world, and the Nashes will be rooting for our team as they turn this season around. As we welcome in Kendrick Perkins on the heels of this news that Steve Nash no longer the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. Perk, thanks for joining us. Just right out of the gate, your thoughts on, on this decision by both Nash and the team. Well, well, first of all, can they at least get the statement right? Okay, what is mutual decision? Is that Nets, you're fired, and Steve Nash saying, <laughs> I agree? <laughs> like, what's going on? But here's the thing. We already – we saw this coming a mile away, right? We saw this in the offseason when Kevin Durant called for Steve Nash's job. We knew that if they didn't get off to a good start that they wasn't going to be – he wasn't going to be here long. Now, Kyrie and KD – don't have no excuses. Josh Bond is a proven head coach in his league. He has proved that he could demand a locker room, and he is going to be that leader. So now all of a sudden is, what are you going to get out of Ben Simmons when he's healthy, okay? What can you do to put them in position to be successful? Again, offensively, you don't need much out of these guys. Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving both are averaging 30-plus right now as a duo. What you need is, is to demand the locker room to get some type of defensive effort. I mean, when you talk about the defensive lack of ability, the accountability, everything that they're doing, they're dead last at the bottom in every statistical category. So I actually like this move. I hate Steve, that Steve Nash had to get fired as part of the job. Great individual. But Jock Vaughn is the person that should have been in there in the first place. All right. So who – okay, I'll get to that in a minute. But who or what is to blame – for the start and the dysfunction and the underperforming we've seen out of the Nets now for the past couple of years, including the two and five start. Well, you ready for this, Matt? Yeah. I believe it's, it's Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Um, when you think about it, right, if, if they didn't want Steve Nash in the offseason, what the hell makes you think they wanted him at the start of the season? And not saying that they were playing to get him fired, but if a, if, a, if a coach is not demanding the locker room and you don't have your two superstars' attention that need to, where you can hold them accountable, then it's not going to work. Then you're going to play carefree and careless basketball on both ends of the floor. So now Kevin Durant, he got his wish that he wanted this offseason. But I blame all those guys, especially Ben Simmons, right? Ben Simmons, you know, we thought that he was going to come back and be the all-star of old. That's not him no more. And I think we need to understand that's not who he is. He's just a, a role player and a piece that you could put in and try to figure it out. Take me inside the ego of an NBA locker room. You've got world-class top flight NBA players, maybe the best score in the game we've seen in quite some time. You mentioned he said this in the offseason. I want this guy mm -hmm. out. It didn't happen. The ego now is that you said it. They got their wish. Do you really believe that now tonight against the Bulls that these egos can come together and put the talent on the court that we believe that they have? Well, they have no choice. They have no choice. And I mean, again, Kevin Durant, you got your wish. And, and look, here it is, Matt. Don't come giving me about you know, franchise guys, they don't have a say-so in what goes on and things to that nature. Yes, they do. I didn't play with a lot of future Hall of Famers. I didn't play with a lot of current, a lot of Hall of Famers that's retired. And here's the thing, right? Before a decision is made, they come and talk to the top players in the organization. So what I'm looking at right now is I'm like, okay, KD, I haven't seen your leadership skills on the floor thus far in this young season. Can I see them now? Now that Steve Nash is out, now are you going to be that vocal leader? Are you going to be that guy that uplifts and holds people accountable? Are you going to be that guy that brings out the best in Ben Simmons, the most that you could get out of him, out of Claxton and those guys? Can you make Royce O'Neal rise his game up? Kevin Durant is the guy that I'm going to be watching the most. Look, we could talk about Kyrie Irving. He's a spectacular player. He's box office. But when it comes to leadership, Kyrie Irving is not that. 
I'm holding Kevin Durant accountable for the leadership of this locker room. Nick Friedell, our NBA reporter, said a moment ago, it doesn't matter what coach you plug into this thing, it's still not going to work. You said a moment ago that you think Jacques Vaughn should have been the head coach <laughs> instead of Steve Nash. If you are the Nets and if you're a player in this locker yeah, room. Yeah, I did. Okay, so do you think Jock's the guy the rest of the way? Would you bring in Ime Udoka's name's already out there? Quinn Snyder's name's already out there. Do you ride with Jacques, or do you try to bring someone in seven games into the season? Or, I mean, fast forward maybe two weeks into the season. Well, I mean, th look, this, this roster is just not good, right? They're soft in the middle. They need somebody to anchor the defense. I don't have the Nets winning anything. Like, we know that their goal should be championship or butts. We understand that. But I don't have them pick making any type of noise in the Eastern Conference. And at this point, man, I don't care if you bring in Jesus Christ. He really can't <laughs> save this locker room to bring them to a championship status like for us competing for a championship. But if you want to just make a little noise, at least make it to the postseason, I think they're okay with riding it out with Jock Vaughn. I think, you know, no need to go out and search right now because you don't know if Kyrie Irving is going to come back. Sure. You don't know what Kevin Durant has in his mind. We saw him switch up so many times in the, uh, in the summertime this past offseason. So right now, just ride it out with Jock Vaughn and just ride the season out, and then whatever happens after that just happens. Look, it's going to be one to watch here for the next couple of weeks, especially tonight against the Bulls. Perk, always good talking to you. With all due respect, Jesus was undefeated, so I'm pretty <laughs> sure he probably could turn this thing around. <laughs> <laughs> That's the laugh that we've missed from Kendrick Perkins. Given, you know, perspective for everybody here, right? Let, let's keep it going now with Tim Legler our NBA analyst here for the past 22 years at ESPN. And, Tim, uh, the ifs at the beginning of this season were well documented, right? Ben Simmons, if he's healthy, what can he do? Everybody was saying Kyrie and Kevin, kumbaya. And then this, your reaction to this decision by Steve, it sounds like primarily just seven games in. Well, Sage, for me, this was the obvious this means. This was clearly going to happen at some point. And if you want to go back to the day Steve Nash got the job and some of the comments that were made at the time from the star players and Kyrie Irving, even at the time, if you recall, said, hey, well, you know, any one of us can be the coach on any given day. And I actually mentioned Jacques Vaughn's name that day. And I knew right then that this was a situation that Steve Nash was not going to be able to navigate. Because when you have your best players coming out with that little – um, support for you when you're named a head coach, you've got a serious problem, particularly when it's your first head coaching job and you're, there's a lot you're going to have to learn along the way. I'm not saying Steve Nash, um, you know, you know, blew, blew my doors off with watching that team on a nightly basis with what, you know, the way I judge coaches Sage, which is defensive preparation, in-game adjustments, late game clock management, rotations, you know, communication skills, and, you know, all those things. No, he has a lot to learn, a long way to go. But I'm just saying the guy was never dealt any sort of hand that gave him a chance to win from the very beginning. He had no leadership on that team in that locker room out of his best players. He had, he had you know, the, obviously the decision that Kyrie Irving made with the vac vaccine, you know, missed him for half a season. James Harden injured and then not wanting to be there anymore. Kevin Durant injured and then demanding that yeah, they fire the head coach over the course of the summer, demanding to be traded. Kyrie Irving demanded to be traded. Ben Simmons, a shell of what he used to be. Think about what Steve Nash has tried to navigate. All the landmines that have been laid out before him never had a chance. So this, to me, is just the obvious conclusion of where this was headed. And to be honest, they probably made the right decision doing it now. Cut bait move on because there was no way that this was going to end well this season for this particular group. Okay, before we look ahead, Tim,